Hi guys, welcome to Honey and Spice Sessions. I am Bolu Babalola and I'm gonna be sitting here with four of my friends to discuss all things Honey and Spice, romance, relationships, rom-coms, what they feel about romance, their favorite their favorite movies, what's how they celebrate romance. It's gonna be really, really fun. We're gonna be making sweet and spicy cocktails because Honey and Spice is obviously sweet and spicy. The love between Kiki and Malachi is sweet and spicy and I really hope you enjoy it. Pre-order it, it's open right now, and it features a thong song, fake dating, friendship, um, some steam. I know I'm biased, but I think you're really gonna enjoy it. Hi guys, my name is Bolly Wellola, author of Loving Color and Honey and Spice, and welcome to Honey and Spice Sessions. And I'm here with the incredible Chota Chandran from, you, best, you may know her from this little, tiny, little show. a little show <laughs> called Bridgerton. How are you? I'm good, thank you for having me. I mean, it's it's literally an honor. I oh, mean, so you're sweet. like essentially like rom-com royalty at this point. Do you, Did you, you are, you are actually. Oh my God, I feel like I have a few rom-com credits to earn before that title. I mean, you I'm started really well, it's a yeah, great start. We're making a picante, by the way. It's a spice yeah. and honey and spice. Um, Speaking of Bridgerton was very spicy. It is a very spicy, spicy show. show. And I think in different ways, right? Yeah, yeah. Like physically spicy, but also like emotionally. Emotionally spicy. spicy. Spicy, how did you feel your sister's taking your man? Girl, I mean, honestly, I like, I'm happy because I always say there are as many types of love as there are moments in time. Yeah. And I love Edwina's, I, I actually babe, saw that from a movie. I saw that from so Mansfield good. Park. I mean, Mansfield Park. I saw that from a movie. Guys, yeah. we need to put her in a Jane Austen adaptation. Thank you. Hello. Do it. Um, but anyway, I'm, I'm like, I love my character's story. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. So, I love how she develops. Like there's a kind of, there's a strength that I find in Edwina. Yeah. Oh my gosh, guys, we're already getting messy. I love it. Hello. <laughs> there's a strength that I find in Edwina and she really stands up for herself and she does it with such grace. And yeah. as much as Bridgerton was, of course, about the main characters and their romance, yeah. I really was drawn to Edwina and her evolution, her love of herself and standing up for herself. Yeah. Uh, I also think that you can't really have true romantic love without self-love. Oh, hundred percent. I've also lost 100%. count. Hundred percent. I don't know. Okay, great. That, I mean, that's good. I think that's a good so. thing. No, I completely agree. That was one of the things that was in my mind when I was writing Honey and Spice. I was like, of course, there's this romantic relationship between uh, the main character Kiki and Malachi, yeah. but for me, it was really about also her evolution of loving herself yeah. and also loving herself enough to receive that love Absolutely. and also to like demand what she kind of deserves. I think it's so crucial. And I think also just the evolution. I love writing a strong woman. Absolutely. I, I, love writing a I also think that like our notion of what a strong woman is, is so like, it tends to be really one way, right? Like Absolutely. it tends to be this kind of extroverted, open, confident person. But like, I think a lot of us feel really powerful and strong but we mm. have a lot of things going on in our mind yeah absolutely. and we can't always express ourselves no. well and we're a bit shy especially if you're creatives and writers people assume we're really we extroverted. Extroverted. But it's, it's like, like no. no that's why we do this exactly because we need a way to express exactly ourselves. it's in a form of expression yeah, absolutely yeah. no i completely completely agree and i think I know, I think there's a strength that also just, you can be quiet and also find ways to use your voice and find your voice. Absolutely. And, and also, I find that a lot of people just think strong women have to be, it's either you're strong without being sweet or yeah. soft. And I think it's possible to do both. And the consequences of being a strong woman exactly. is people think they can it's put punishing. you through it. Exactly. And I'm like, no, I want to cry. Yeah, I want to cry. I want to cry. I can like, cry and also be a bad bitch. Yes. Like, there's, there's two things go hand in hand. And that should be on my um You can cry and be and also be a bad bitch. Yeah. I think it's, I think it's crucial. Great. I think it's, That's if great. I make Kiki cry, I did make Kiki cry a couple of times in the book, but I was like, but I don't, I don't think there was any doubt that there was like, she's a bad bitch who also knows who Especially she is. Especially if you're a woman of color, right? Like, yeah. You're either a victim who's super submissive or a villain, or, a villain yeah. or you're like this woman that can be put through it all and it's like no I'm actually kind of all of those things. I'm all of those things and more and more. Yeah. How was it did you find it empowering playing a woman of colour who was in that kind of space and that romantic space and a strong woman of colour yeah. and also very sweet as well. Yeah and I think that it was also like you know, a very specific idea of femininity mm. that, you know, is not always universal, but in Edwina's case, that's what she was mm. kind of representing. I think it was just wonderful to have a character that was romantic and loved love, but that was also really Indian, right? Yes. Like she wasn't trying to fit into a mold. It was 
consciously she was an Indian woman, mm -hmm. and I loved, I loved playing that role. It's so yeah. nice. I love having culture seep into romance because a lot of Absolutely. the time, when it's like a mainstream media, so I'm not talking about Bollywood or Nollywood right yeah. now, but mainstream media, which yeah. is like very Western media, when we see a woman of color in a romantic role, the culture is almost divorced from her. Absolutely. As if like she can only be worthy of romance or without her culture. Or she rejects her culture. Or she rejects right? her culture. Or it's like, I'm defying. Yeah, I'm defying my... all the norms, and my right. culture is actually very oppressive. Yeah. And I wanted it, even with, with Honey and Spice, I wanted it to be a celebration of culture in tandem of rom with the romance, you know? Because all of our cultures, we have love and we love love. We love and love. I, think, you know. I, mean, I mean, you obviously come from a culture that celebrates that within, within film. Yeah. Bollywood often celebrates romance and I find it really strange. And also, fun fact, Nigerians love Bollywood. I, I think it makes a lot that. of sense. Like, even yeah. my, my parents grew up watching Bollywood films in their local cinema. Cheers. And I think, cheers. I think love is bold. And I think it makes sense that Bollywood celebrates romance because Bollywood is also a very bold culture. And colorful. And colorful. Love is, co I love in color, guys. Love is colorful. Yeah. <laughs> um, so did you learn anything about romance when, when playing like a romantic lead in Bridgerton and, and love in general? I think, I mean, kind of the things I've touched on in that you really cannot offer love to someone else. Okay, sorry, pause. She just made an incredible picante. <laughs> it's so good, it's so good. It's like the best I've ever had. Oh, it's thank so you. Good. Um, sorry, but yeah, it's kind of what I was um, saying earlier about you really cannot offer romantic love to someone if you don't love yourself. A hundred percent. Because you're always searching. And yeah. I think it comes from a place of like dependency in some way, which is not healthy. Mm -hmm. So that's the main thing I learned. I, I, I agree. I think also, People often like think, I think it's important for a woman to have her own, especially a woman, to have her own sense of Absolutely. self apart from romance, because romance can't be the substance yeah. of your life. Is there a good example in pop culture that like you think represents that, or portrays that well? It can be recent or yeah. like in the past. Well, I think of someone who I'm obsessed with, mm -hmm. but I think of like Rihanna. Yeah. I think of someone who like clearly, you know, doesn't need anything from a man, mm -hmm. but she wants love and she doesn't settle. Or she, and she doesn't know. apologize for wanting romance either. No. I think exactly. when you're like a woman who knows her mind and is about her career or whatever, I think people often think it's weak to want romance, but it's not. It's a, it's, it's a really courageous. Also. It's very courageous. In this climate, <laughs> for a woman to be like, I want romance and I want love, but hey, I also have like an amazing job yeah. and I'm super independent. It's, it's, it's really like, it's almost radical actually, I think. Mm. And it's, and I found it, and I find it really empowering in Bridgerton as well, just to see women who are just like, I have a, I have a mind of my own, a yeah. voice of my own, but also, yeah, I like you. It's like a kind of a yeah. cherry on top. Yeah, You have absolutely. a movie that loves that, that, that rep represents that. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's a real tough one. I mean, what is your favorite rom-com actually? It's when, it's an obvious one. It's when Harry, Harry met Sally. Sally Singh. It's my number. I watch that film. Oh my like, God. Same. Maybe once a month. I just, for me, what makes a rom-com, because I'm going to say something controversial. Okay, okay. go on, go on, go on, I'm ready. I think I'm if ready. you're a good actor, Yeah. I think if you're a good actor, you can have chemistry with anybody. I, I agree. Like, I, I agree. don't think chemistry is this sort of amorphous thing. I think no. it is about your skill. It's about the camera, it's about the editing, like, it's about the music that you choose. Yeah, yeah. For me, what makes a good rom-com is the writing. It's, the it's just the dialogue, and that's what When Harry Met Sally. Sally has, guys. I've met yes. my new best friend. You have it on oh, camera. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that's what, like, that's what. That it's is. so true. The so dialogue is it. key, and what I love about When Harry Met Sally is the friendship leads, like, links to the dialogue. It's the fact that they get each other enough to like bounce yeah. off of each other, and even when they're sparring, and they're not necessarily friends. Because obviously, we know it goes through like it spans across years. Yeah. When they first meet, even though they don't necessarily like each other, there's a connection there. Absolutely. And I really like when I wrote Honey, um, Honey and Spice. That was really in my mind. I wanted to be it to be like a progression of their yeah. relationship, and I also wanted to see why they like each other. Yeah. My thing with a lot of rom coms recently is that I see two people. First of all, they don't have chemistry, but also that I'm like, why do they like each other? Apart from like being attracted to each other, mm -hmm. what about their personality kind of, what about the personalities works together? Yeah. How do you detect like when you connect with someone? Like what yeah. is it that makes you click when you meet somebody? Yeah. I also think with, when, when Harry met Sally, which I, um, what I really love is that both characters are a little bit unlikable. Yes. Like both characters are like very Rough openly edges. annoying, mm. but it, when they get together, it works. Um, and I think that way about like a lot of the rom-coms I love. Like mm. I love 
Jane Austen's Emma, obviously Clueless as well because oh my of gosh, it. Clueless, Clueless. Right? And it's like all of these things, the characters are not they're always not, great. They're not always perfect. great. But it's about seeing why they as characters work. And I think mm. it's also important to have a especially a female protagonist that isn't perfect. I love a flawed woman. Yeah. I love a woman that has rough edges. I made Kiki kind of have um, a tough exterior. Yeah. And I also wanted her to make, to be a little bit frustrating, to be like, why did yeah. she do that? Because yeah. love is frustrating. And sometimes when we're, when we're in a romantic situation, we get scared of love. It's yeah. a really vulnerable, vulnerable thing. Yeah. Um, and what I've also, like being on Bridgeton, what I really noticed about women who are scared or who make mistakes is that a lot of people don't allow women to make mistakes, right? Mm, yeah, you're right. It's they, uh, they allow yeah. men to and do they get bad punished things terribly. and be yeah. messy and be unlikable, but women often don't have that grace. No. And I think the only way like that we fix that is by having more characters who make more mistakes. More characters that make, and also more women of color characters who make mistakes yeah. because it's like, like you said, it's either we're the villain or the victim or kind of mains into saints. But it's like, no, we can be messy too. Yeah, doesn't mean you're a bad person because you do something I mean, Bridget was very messy. This last season was very messy. <laughs> I was like, at your sister's wedding? Bitch, really? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's so funny because obviously we didn't stick to the book mm. and we don't know in advance. Like we literally right. know like a, f a, a week maybe before we start filming that block, we I get the skits on what happens. So- That's so interesting. We Were you really shocked? Had a, by the time of episode four, when Anthony proposes to Edwina, we like did not know how this was going to result. We were like, either Edwina dies. Because <laughs> how is she going to get out? <laughs> or, you know, like we were like, we, we have no idea. Mm. And I think that the only way they could get out of this without anyone looking bad was it being Edwina's choice. And I think that was mm. the right. Writing is so crucial. I would obviously would say that as an author. <laughs> But also the acting, they Thank really, you. really bring it to life. And it's Thank about you. that connection. Um, it's the same thing in the in real life, like when you meet somebody, it's about the chemistry, you know? It's just about yeah. like how you connect with somebody. Yeah. Um, so Harry Met Sally, Clueless. And Emma, I'd say it was and Emma, Emma, but Emma Clueless. And Clueless yeah. All the, you know, things that have stemmed from from, from that. Is there anything else that you really love? Um, so there's a Bollywood movie called Jab We Met. Okay. Uh, with Shahid Kapoor and Karina Kapoor, which is so sweet. What's the plot? What's the plot? The plot is basically, um, there's this man who's like depressed, really, mm -hmm. really on the verge of suicide actually. And there's this bubbly, really bubbly, naive, happy-go-lucky girl. And the happy-go-lucky girl sort of runs away to meet with her lover mm -hmm. and then like, the depressed guy brings her back home and everyone thinks he's the lover, but he's not. And then they right. run away again. And actually when she meets up with her lover, it's nothing like she imagined. And he like he leaves our interaction completely transformed, his life for the better, everything starts going well mm. and he wants to find her again. And um, she's become, like they've kind of switched roles. Right. So she ends up being depressed after her lover mm. like spawns her and he's very happy and joyful after her in his interactions with her and it's about them connecting again oh, realizing they that. make each other better that's so do you know what i find that it's like friends to love i love friends i love friends to love is that your favorite trope i was going to ask what your favorite trope is my favorite trope I have to say it's probably enemies to lovers i know it's like yes. the verge of 10 season 2 i was hoping line, you would say that but i think that is what it is yeah yeah so honey and spice is enemies it's actually a mixture so it's enemies to lovers but it's also i thought there's so many tri friends like, to lovers is also friends a to lovers. really good one I, put, I stuffed i think i stuffed all of them in i think i just got very excited so there's enemies yeah. to lovers there's fake dating and there's also like friends to love as well because they become enemy they're enemies and they become friends and yeah. they become lovers yeah and I think that's nice because enemies to lovers, I'm like, okay, but like, when do they like each other? Like, there needs yeah. to be a space where they really like yeah. each other. But I love friendship based romance, with romances, which is why I love Brent Harry Met Sally. Yeah. I think it's really crucial. That was enemy. That was enemies to lovers. I know too, it's though, true. Right? It's enemies to lovers. Do you know what I think is so weird? Because when I talk about the book, I realize how like all my influences basically, and it's like Brent Harry Met Sally, like Nora Ephron, and also like. Weirdly R and B. Is there anything like non-visual that inspires like how you see romance? Because for me, music is a huge, huge part of it, and features in my writing all the time. Oh my god, babe! Music is like the main trigger for me whenever really? I get into character. Whenever I'm creating something, yeah, I think um, there's just something so overwhelming about music. Right? Mm -hmm. So, like, what's your favorite like romantic song? Oh, that's a great question. Actually, it features in um, Honey and Spice. So, When We Get By by D'Angelo. So, it's like a deep cut. Yeah. 
and it's one of his oldest albums. Yeah. But it's, and the lyrics aren't even that deep, but it's just like, the lyrics are like basically having a lovely day with somebody that you really like. What's your favorite romantic song? Um, Grind On Me by Pretty Ricky. <laughs> I'm joking, it's not. Um, my God, I don't know. I can't, I, I really can't think of just like one Because there's so many, song. right? There's so many. Do you have a genre? I would say R&B for yeah. sure. Who is, is this controversial to ask who your celebrity crush is? Am I allowed to ask that? Yeah, you might just you like see me. that I bump. You okay, who me. is your celebrity crush? Um, it's it's Trevor Noah, I really? think. Really? I think he's the dimples or so. Okay, new. I see the and dimples. He's so funny and he is smart. Not that I know him personally. I mean, I wish I knew. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think Trevor. I'm so attracted to intelligence. Inte right? I'm so attracted to intelligence, intelligence and, and humor. humor. Thing is, I just yeah. I do love a man who can like be funny without being a clown, you know? Yeah. And also wanting to be the center of attention. Yeah. Like, it's nice. It's an intelligent humor. It's a wit. I also feel like he'd, again, I don't know him, but I feel Especially like- Especially my guess. No, I'm joking. <laughs> you imagine? But I feel like he's really secure. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, I feel like he wouldn't care about his partner shining bright. Yeah. And I think that like a lot of men are confident. I'm not sure a lot of men are super secure. They're not, and it, the thing is the confidence is also kind of a facade because you mm. know, we are powerful women. Mm. And I've, I've met a lot of men who are like, who say they want a powerful woman? They but, want it until they have it. And then it, you, and they then start like, interacting with the powerful woman, they get very scared. That's they get exactly very terrified. Yeah, that's so exactly, yeah, yeah. security is very important. Yeah. Okay, so on the subject of celebrities, we're gonna do Snog, Mario Boyd. Okay. Oh yeah, and then we've got a game to play. Okay. Rom Com Rumble. Okay. Which I forgot about. Okay. okay. <laughs> Snog, Mario Boyd. Edward Cullen. Okay. From Twilight. Viacart Bridgerton. From Bridgerton. And Paul Rod, who plays Josh in Clueless. Okay. Okay, okay. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, it's easy. Edward Cullen. Because he's a vampire. I just remember. <laughs> he's literally he's a vampire. Hour. But I also, and I, I think this is Edward Cullen, by the way. This isn't the actor. This is the character. Because yeah. I love our pat. Yeah. Obviously. 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 He's a very charming man. Yeah. But I remember when I was younger being on Team Jacob. I did. I was, I was Team Jacob for the longest time. Yeah, so Edward Cullen's got to gotta get the axe. <laughs> yeah. Um, JB is big bro, mm -hmm. but Viscount Richardson is, is kind I of mean. everything. So <sighs> snog. The charming. VB. Yeah. Back at Richardson and Mary, and it's Paul Red. Like Paul Red is also a vampire. Yeah, but oh, yeah. Josh from Clueless. I, I'd marry Josh from Clueless. What about you? I think that's. I think that's wise. I think. I think you do the same. Oh, what would I? I, I don't know because I no actually I think I might marry the Viscount. Obviously, Edward I feel Collins, like the sex Collins, would be steamier with VB. The, the the sex would be steamier, and also you know Edward Collins already dead, so he can yeah like, he can just he can avoid he can yeah. go off the cliff. Um, but yeah, Viacar, I think I would, because it's like that kind of steam every single day. It's yeah. Every, I love steam. I, I feel like I would be so unproductive though. That's, you wouldn't get anything done. Yeah. You would not get anything done. Just a done. good snog, that will be a memory that lasts forever. I can tell my And then Paul Rudd. Cause I feel like and then Paul I'll be Rudd, like Josh. I feel like, no, I must keep on saying Paul Rudd. I should not say Paul Rudd. <laughs> Josh from Clueless. I think, I think it would be like good sex, but also like, a good relationship. Like you would be able to, it's not like too much, not overwhelming, I right? feel like Josh would be very giving. I don't he'd know if he'd be giving. great, but I feel like he'd be very giving. <laughs> he would be about Which your is satisfaction. Which A plus forever. Exactly. So there we go. When I was writing Malachi, I was like, okay, this is a generous guy. This is a generous guy? A ge is he good though? He's good. Is I was he like, generous I, but fails? No, 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 he's generous and, it, and he's generous. Okay, can I ask you a cheeky question? <laughs> yeah, like, ask me a is it And me? I'm manifesting this for you because okay. I think you deserve it okay, and you'd you. be great. Thank you. If Honey and Spice was made into a movie, yes. Who would you want to play Kiki? I'll say both. I don't know. Who do That's you want to play Kiki and uh, Malachi? Okay, so Kiki, I just don't know because I feel like she's, I don't know her, her yet. I think Kiki needs to be like a, like a star that's like, hasn't, like we, we don't know who she is yet. Right? I've got two people in mind, Kiki. Okay, please whisper them after this because, oh, yeah. yes. Please. Okay, okay. And for Malachi, um, Dancer Idris, oh. Michael Ward. Yes. Or Malachi Kirby. Yeah. And my like, my- All three, very all three, great like, choices. I would love coffee syrup, but he's literally American and I want this to be a very he's, London- He's also too overwhelming. Yeah, yeah, he's Like, too, there's he's a lot too, of power there. It's like- That is not- yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's, it's also like, I actually fancy way too much for it to-, <laughs> yeah, to, to, it's to too yeah, it's, I can't be near him. Somebody with a lot of sauce and is very London and very real and charisma, charisma is so important, you know? I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for Michael Ward. Michael Ward, but I think okay. that's back. Michael Ward, let's manifest this. Well, if he doesn't get and it, I'll, then. And, I'll, and I'll, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you my suggestions for Kiki. Okay, time. please, please, whisper them in my ear. Yeah. So now for 
Rum Cum Rumble. Yeah. Where basically, I mean, it's very self-explanatory. You just pull a name out and then we just talk about the rom-com. Okay. So mixing up a little bit, take a pick. I'm gonna go right at the bottom. Okay. To be difficult. <laughs> okay. I can't do this one. I legit picked out Bridgerton. <laughs> no! I legit, look, no! I legit picked out my own oh, show. I can't do that one. Okay, fine, fine. Sorry, sorry, sorry. sorry. What are these? That's like, I, that's, that's kind of crazy. That's weird, that was spiritual, guys. That's kind of crazy, okay. What is it? Twilight. Oh my God. Can, Can I make it again? No, no, we need to talk about Twilight. Okay, fine, 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 fine. Were you, were you obsessed with it when you were a teenager? I read all the books same. in like a week. Same, I was same. obsessed. Same. What What is it about Teenage Girls and Twilight? Because now, and let me not even diss Twilight. It's Love Triangle. It's what a it sexy older guy and he just like really fancies her. Like it's just like what we wanted. And like Love Triangles are so sexy. They're so sexy. And also I was genuinely confused about like, do, who do I want her to be with? And I think that makes a love, good Love Triangle as yeah. well. Like who do I want this person to be with? Yeah. It's not a Love Triangle. Like it's very, the answer is very clear. easy if it's obvious. Although like now I look back and I'm like, it was obviously Edward. It was obviously you know Edward. I mean? Like looking back. But then I was like, oh, but a werewolf is hotter than a vampire. A werewolf is hotter than a vampire. <laughs> it is, right? But it does not make it really uncomfortable that we find that to be the no, case. No, I know. I have, why actually, have we find werewolves so I forgot, I have a whole bit of- Don't be careful what you can say. No, I have a whole bit on Twilight in the book and they discuss Twilight. It's very weird. <laughs> Stella got her groove back. I mean, Angela Bassett. Gorgeous woman, an amazing so woman. And Ty Diggs as well. Yeah. No, Ty Diggs is actually in one of my favorite rom coms, which is Brown Sugar. Have you ever seen that? I haven't seen my sugar. So it's basically, essentially, this is a reductive way to say it, but it's like a black version of When Harry Met Sally in, the term, in terms of the fact that it's friendship based. Right. And it like kind of follows them throughout the year, yeah. except they char start when they're ch like children. Yeah. But Ty Diggs just has this like sensu this is sensuality, and yeah. I love him and Stella. He's a very handsome man. He's a very handsome man yes. but what i love about so i got proof back is that it's an unconventional yeah. rom-com in yeah. that it's not two people in their 20s mm -hmm. figuring out life it's a woman that's been through it who's a bit older and i i think like it's so sensual and i think it's like amazing that a different type of love story in a different age demographic is represented and absolutely it's and it's wonderful. like when women get to a certain point it's like they're almost invisible And then when you're a woman of color, it's like invisible times two, exactly. you know? And exactly. it's just so lovely to see her being loved and enjoying that love. Yeah, and there are no stereotypes. Like, mm. I never felt uncomfortable watching it. I was like, this is a black woman living her life mm -hmm. and she owns her identity, but this isn't like, there are no cliches There's no this. cliches. She's allowed to be her own person. Exactly. And her and race is like just one facet one, of her identity. Exactly, and it's not, she's not hypersexual either. In the fact, she's very much in control of her desire and her sexuality, mm. but it's not like, almost dehumanizing sexuality, yeah. you know? And I really wanted that. I really love writing women in touch with their, in touch with their yeah. like, desirability. With yeah. Kiki, she's in uni, so it's quite new to her and it's just really fun to, her, to write her figuring it out. Yeah, and Malachi yeah. helping her along, of course. <laughs> the Breakup, which is my housemates' favorite movie. The Breakup, favorite yeah, role. that's with Vince. Vaughn and Jennifer yeah, Aniston. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you like it? I love it. I, but I love Jennifer Aniston. I know. I, lo I, I, love I actually her. think Jennifer Aniston is really, I know she's super famous, obviously, she's a superstar, but I still think she's underrated because she's so funny and so vulnerable and at the same time. she minds her business. She minds her business. This woman a great is great. Yeah. I, I adore her. Yeah. And I still, f I love Friends. I just, I mean, I don't know if that's basic, but I adore Friends. No, I think she's spectacular. I she's think she, I think, This is my my friend Hugh Sachs, who is in Richmond with me. He always says this. He's like, no no one can fake charisma. No. Like charisma, when you, when an actor gets a note, like be charismatic. You it's can't like that's do, that's not something you can pretend. Otherwise, people would do it all the time. It's something and innate. Jennifer Aniston has, has it. She has it. She just has. And it, I really is. do think it elevates it elevates anything and it ele yeah. elevates rom coms as well. But yeah. what what what. Category of rom com is the breakup. It's like it's not really a rom com. I mean, it's, you know, a, it's, it's no, so no, a rom com. It's a rom com, but it's like they don't end up together, right? They do. I forgot about that. <laughs> I think I forgot the end. Did they? They break up and then they Come get back, back together because they're like, oh my god, I actually really love you. Maybe I didn't watch it in the end. <laughs> Maybe I was like, oh, I can't watch. It okay, okay, go again, go again. Okay, okay. Maybe not the breakup. Uh, no, what could it be? How to lose a guy in 10 days? Oh my god, I love, I love this film. 
Kate Hudson and Matthew McConaughey on that rom com. The, guy. Like it's I like can't even. it's peak rom com, right? Because it it's it like is, a it woman is. called Andy Anderson who works like she works in a media house. She's a journalist. She's a journalist. She writes one article a month. I just I know. Glamorous life. She lives in a really cute apartment. Yeah. She has like a work wife who like her best friend. It's just so good. And Matthew McConaughey is so charming. He's so but he so is. Charming. He always is. Have you read his book? No, I haven't. My, yeah. my best, one of my best friends, she's she's obsessed with him. Apparently, the audio book is really good. Like, because I think he reads it. And I think he's very smart. He's but, very smart. Like you said, fake dating, but not even fake dating because like, they're not in on it. Do you know what? Okay, my kind favorite my stars. favorite thing about fake dating that I really enjoyed writing it is like you would never agree to fake date someone who you didn't fancy. Like you just wouldn't. Yes, like why would I do you're that? So right. So you're my so favorite right. running joke in Honey and Spice is like her being like, yeah, we, me and me and Malachi fake dating, and her friends are like, okay, sure. okay, cool, sure, yeah, right. Because the thing is, you obviously want to bone him. Yeah. Like you just wouldn't do yeah. that if you didn't yeah, like someone. Yeah, you're so right. And I love that because it's like. You, then you follow people like mm. being vulnerable and kind of realizing their own feelings and like yeah. catching up to their feelings. It's almost like their heart moves before their mind Absolutely. does. It's so and there's fun. like always those moments of realization where like they stop pretending. Exactly, they stop pretending. And it's just and like this is just real. There's no yeah. pretense. I think the pretense is almost like a protection mechanism to like Absolutely. trying to trick themselves into feeling that they're not being yeah. vulnerable when they actually are. But also it gives them a space to be themselves because they're like they have this yeah. veneer of like we're pretending. Exactly. We're really not. Yeah. And it's just I think it's a really clever premise. I think it like is. it's kind of it's one of those films that really stands the test of time. Like oh my I gosh. feel like my children could watch it and they'd still be as entertained. I could as rewatch we it all the time. It's just so fun and also funny. It is. it is funny. But like can we talk about the fact that films like How to Lose a Guy in Ten Days yeah. just don't get yeah. made they anymore? They don't get made anymore. Like why? And I think people just think rom coms are silly when like they're really fun and it gives us hope. And also people forget like the allure of like two people who seem like they really like each other, the chemistry. The thing about rom-coms is it's such a testament to like women because I think a mm. lot of things that women love gets ridiculed, right? Yeah. Like romance novels, mm -hmm, rom-coms, mm -hmm. boy bands. Mm -hmm. Like they get ridiculed and I they feel do. like as women we should kind of own loving something own. like that. And also it's emotionally intelligent. Like yeah. it's really taps yeah. into something like because I, I wrote it, a lot of my male friends read Love and Colour and I just got so many messages of it, like I loved it, it was really funny, That's like da da da. Yeah. And I was like, oh, because you don't, you only read it because I'm your friend and now you realise you like rom-coms, but you yeah. didn't realise because you thought they were just yeah. for girls and it's really exactly, frivolous. Yeah. But like, they're very kind of emotionally deep yeah. and also what I love about rom-coms and romance novels that it makes you reflect within, like what do I want? Yeah. What do I desire? Like what makes yeah. me like click, you know? So yeah, love, love that movie. The proposal. Sandy B, baby. I Sandy. love Sandra Bullock. She's like my favorite. Uh, Lex to Julia Roberts. She's like my favorite. She Sandy B is probably, I'd say one of my. I love Sandy B. Like I her best days with her. her. Like, Miss Congeniality is the best film of all time. It, obviously. It, 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 obviously, she's so funny and she's so charming. She's like the. I hate this term. Truthfully, but I also think like this is the this she is the epitome of this. She's the girl next door. She's, She's the girl, girl next every, door. Every girl wants to be and every guy wants to be with and nobody like can even hate on her. I know. She's perfect. She's like stunningly beautiful, but she's also relatable, which is hard. It's hard to she's do. So great. And Ryan Reynolds is really good in that too. I think he's a yeah. really good comedic actor. He's amazing. And, and Betty White. And Betty White. Oh God rest God. her soul. To the window. To the wall. It was so good. <laughs> it was so good. And again, another unlike like a woman who is on the surface mm. unlikable and you know, we love I her know, for we it. We love her for it. And it's about, you know, learning to be vulnerable and the bravery yeah. it takes to be vulnerable. So it's really beautiful. Again, you know, not one about women in their early 20s. Yeah, figuring shit out. I this know, exactly. In a different Fully situation. Fully formed, exactly. Yeah. So, romantic advice. What is like, okay, either what is the best romantic advice you've ever received or what is the best romantic advice that you could give? Okay, the best romantic advice I could give mm -hmm is that you need to figure out what your needs are versus mm. what your wants are. Mm. And what I mean by that is I don't think any woman should settle, especially women of color. We mm. should absolutely mm -hmm. not settle. But I think compromise is a natural part of life and a natural part of every single relationship, whether that's friendships or romantic mm -hmm. ones. So I think it is important to figure out what are your absolute yeah. priorities. I have five of them. And mm. what are things that are great and you'd love for your mm. partner to have, but actually, do you know what? If they have everything else, you're fine to forego. And once you have that clarity in mind, I think that you'll, 
you can avoid the sort of rose tinted glasses. You can give、yeah. people a chance that you might not have otherwise.、Mm -hmm. But yeah, as I, I say, I that、agree. doesn't mean you're settling. No,、right? it doesn't. It just means you're. You're you're understanding that people aren't perfect. Yeah, and also you know when you want to be with somebody, it's like two whole lives coming together.、Yeah. Of course, you're gonna have to compromise because、yeah. you have you're all coming, you're both coming with、yeah. your things, right? But you're right. It's absolutely knowing who you are, knowing what you really need,、yeah. and what you want in a relationship,、yeah. and then figuring out the, figuring out the rest, you know. And、yeah. also. It means you've set your standards, so、Absolutely. you're so when it's not when your needs aren't、yeah. being met, you're like, okay, this isn't、exactly. what I want. Exactly,、yeah. they can have all your wants, but if they don't have a need, then what's yeah. Good? And the best advice I got、mm -hmm. was,、um, your romantic partner can't be everything. Yeah, they can't provide everything、mm -hmm. that you need. That's why you have friends. friends. That's why you have family. So, like, again, this kind of ties into the other thing of like, there's no such thing as a perfect partner. No, and like, don't expect them to give you everything. Yeah, I think when when I was writing Honey and Spice, it was really important for me to not write Malachi is perfect or Kiki is perfect、mm. because of course they're not. But it's about like, knowing each other enough to like allow the grace、yeah. for for flaws and mistakes、exactly. and liking enough liking each other enough to like let's work this out because I、yeah. actually think there's something here that、yeah. can be salvaged and、yeah. you know enjoyed.、Um, so let's do a toast to. What can I toast to? What about us doing something together? Okay, let's toast to an amazing dinner in the future where we like basically just freak out, out, geek out, yeah, geek out, talk about rom coms and figure out world domination. I think、right. that would be great. Thank you so much for coming. This was so great. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me.